Hey everybody, my name is Monsel. Today we're gonna talk about the five most favorite edible berries of yours truly in the great state of Texas. At the end of this video, I'm gonna share my number one favorite tool for finding these wild berries. But first, I wanna make a point about the ecology of this great state of Texas. It's one of the most diverse in the entire country. In fact, it has coastal plains, it has post oak savanna, pine, desert, plains of all types, hill country. So not every single one of these berries is going to be found in every part of Texas. Keep that in mind, but these have great distributions, and in fact, you probably don't have to travel that far in order to find them. Number one, mulberries. Mulberry trees are relatively abundant in Texas, which is great, and they kind of taste like a blackberry, but a little bit more sweet, and definitely it's clear that they are a wild, berry instead of a cultivated one from the grocery store. I live in Austin, Texas, and one of my favorite watering holes is a place called Barton Springs Pool, and right at the entrance is a mulberry tree, and there are dozens of mulberries that I often can pick from every day that I come to the springs. As with most wild foods, these berries come all at one time in late April. Most people have no idea what they're looking for, so there is an abundance of these mulberries, and most people, even especially in the city, won't have any idea. So you can have them all to yourself. But there are some rules for wild foraging that are really good to stick to for the health and the ecology of the land. And for abundant berries, like mulberries, the rule of thumb is to not take more than 50%. So if you find a mulberry tree and you wanna take mulberries to go make a jam or go make uh, some kind of baked good, just remember, take only about 50%. And the way that I do that is I'll take one, skip one, take one, skip one. And that kind of mentally allows me to leave 50% while I take the others. Actually, now that I think about it, I don't even really take 50% even if I tried. I just like to take a few here and there to experience a wild forage on a daily basis. But the reason we leave these berries is for the wildlife. And the squirrels, the birds, there are raccoons, there are tons of animals that rely on wild berries for their survival. Number two is a rusty black hawk. And this is courtesy of my friend Jared Holmes, who's a ecologist, biologist, and regenerative land expert. And he has explained to me how great these berries are. They are found in central eastern Texas, but they are somewhat rare. Because they're uncommon, try and only take 10% of these berries if you find them. They will be available in the late fall or the winter. If you go out and you're looking for these rusty black haw and you find some greenish looking berries, these aren't ripe yet, don't pick them just yet. Number three, surprisingly, is a hackberry. Now it's surprising because hackberries are used for landscaping across the country, definitely in Texas, and there's evidence that hackberry was consumed by humans and our ancestors over 500 thousand years ago. According to some people, it's one of the first berries recorded that humans consumed, and it's ubiquitous. As with so many things in nature, we humans project our views, and a hackberry tree is often considered to be a trash tree because they favor hardwoods, but what they don't realize is the hackberry provides an abundance of red, orange, and purple berries in late fall for you to appreciate with plenty of nutrition and calories. Number four is a dewberry, and a dewberry is 
very similar to a blackberry. It's a creeper vine on the forest floors and it creates a delicious berry. My friend Jesse Elder has 20 acres near Bastrop where he produces jelly made from dewberries on his land. I love to use jelly on different types of breads and other foods, but dewberries are delicious, they're sweet, and they are ubiquitous. One thing to be mindful of is sometimes to the untrained eye, they look like Virginia creeper. So just make sure you're paying attention and you find the right leaves for these berries. Number five and personally my favorite berry is the agarita berry. Agarita is generally found in the hill country. It has beautiful yellow flowers, red berries, and I like to pick these berries as somewhat of a meditative practice. The leaves are pokey and spiny, and it is sometimes painful if I'm not paying attention. So there's a certain way of plucking these berries very gently that allows me to appreciate the process as much as the result. Now some people like to put a tarp or blanket underneath the bush and just smack the bush until the berries come free, but personally I like to engage with nature in a more meditative, reflective way than necessarily taking the things that I want. So agarita is also very useful for medicinal purposes. Inside the bark is yellow color, which is berberine, which is used for anti-aging and other benefits. And the dry leaves can be used for stomach or digestive issues. So the whole plant, berries and stalk and leaves are beneficial. Now these berries are ripe in the late spring. And one thing I've noticed is that they have a range. So somewhere between one and three weeks is the range where agarita berries can uh, differ even on the same property. It doesn't matter whether it's different environments. You can have some that are ready one week and then takes a couple more weeks for other bushes to be producing berries. That's just part of the uniqueness of each of these individual plants. And the berries have a tart taste to them, and I personally love to use them making wild hog meatballs. My favorite recipe is to use ground wild hog with some pecans, with some agarita berries, and it is a perfect Texas treat that's got fat, carbohydrates, and protein. Those are five of my favorite Texas berries, but the question becomes, why pick the berries at all? The truth is, you're not going to be able to necessarily receive enough calories from these wild berries unless you make it a full-time job. And so for me, the process is really about engaging with the natural world. There's something that awakens inside of us when we go out in search of a food, we find it, we have the pride of finding it, the joy of finding a new bush, a new tree, and that experience awakens us to a new relationship with the earth, one that we're in participation with. It's a participatory knowing. And the number one tool that I use in order to find these berries, and especially for you if you have no experience and you don't really feel comfortable trying to find them yourself, is an app called iNaturalist. That is a beautiful decentralized app where people can make notes on where specific plants are. You can find them near you and go harvest some wild berries. I make these videos because they are fun, but I need your help in order to continue to do so. So like this video, subscribe to the channel if you want the content directly to you, and comment if you have any questions. And for those of you who wanna be an even more active participant in nature, visit sacredhunting.com. These are experiences that I personally facilitate. You can learn, obviously, about hunting, but I do so much more teaching about the flora and the fauna of this landscape, including some delicious wild edible berries.